the default Blender file. Before we get started on anything, we're gonna go to Edit, Preferences, and under the Interface tab, you wanna change the resolution scale to something other than one. For me, 1.2 works just fine. The header position, you wanna change the bottom. Under the Input tab, you wanna select Emulate Numpad. Under the Key Map tab, you wanna select with mouse button, you want that set to left. The grave accent tilde action, you want to set to navigate. And tab for timing, you want to make sure that's selected. On this icon, you want to select that and press save preferences. Do not trust auto save. So when I refer to the 3D view window, the 3D viewport, this is what I mean. This whole area right here. Under this, this is the timeline. This is the properties window, and this is the outliner. So in the properties window, we're going to select this raindrop icon and select this units. We're going to make sure the unit system is set to metric and the length is set to meters. With the default cube selected in the 3D viewport, we're going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to go down here to this magnet icon and enable snap. We're going to go to the icon next to it and make sure increment snap is selected. We're going to press G to move, Z to move along the Z axis, and we're going to move our mouse up, snap it to the floor plane. We're going to disable snapping and go to the overlay section and select edge length as the measurement. We're going to select the face selection and we're going to select the top of the cube, zoom out, G, Z, once more. And we're gonna set it to 18. Hold down shift for precise measurements. We're gonna press tab, go back into object mode. We're gonna go to the outliner window. And then we're gonna name this ref cube. We're gonna go to this funnel icon in the outliner and enable this and that. We're gonna hide this cube and you see this eye turns into a closed eye. We're gonna press Shift S and make sure cursor to world origin is selected. So by default, we're in user perspective. If you press five, you'll see we'll go into orthographic. So basically orthographic is what we'll be using for reference planes. When blueprints are made, they're made in orthographic images. So we're gonna press one to go to the front orthographic three to the right, and seven to the top. Control one is back, control three is left, control seven is bottom. So basically, we're gonna start with the first, first front plane, and press one. You can also press the tilde action and do any one of these. So I'm gonna select front orthographic. I'm gonna press shift A, image, reference. I save this on my desktop. You can download this for free on my Gumroad. The link will be in the description. So basically, we're going to select the RX-78 Gundam Origin reference plane. This works for any one of these. So load reference image. We're going to go to the properties over here. The depth should be front. We want to be in front of all the objects be front going to be the front of the object if it's both it's going to be double-sided you don't want that and we're going to make sure it's only visible in orthographic so for press 5 you'll see it's not visible in perspective mode we're going to make sure the opacity is checked and the good opacity for three planes is 0.15 you'll see why in a minute so we're going to tap into the front again we're going to press G to move, and we're going to move this plane to this plane. So G, gonna line this up, zoom in. All right, so that's pretty much lined up. So now we're going to use the 3D cursor as a pivot point to scale this to match the reference cube. But first, we're going to press Alt-H to bring back the reference cube. We're going to make sure this reference plane is the only thing selected. 
and then we're going to scale it. But first we need to go to transform pivot point at the bottom and select 3D cursor. Now we scale it and line it up to the head. Congratulations, you made your first reference plane. So I'm going to rename this in the outliner to front. We're going to press shift D to duplicate. And then we're going to press R to rotate. Z, 90. Press enter to apply that operation. And we're going to rename this to right. We're going to press three. And we're going to align this to this axis. So we're going to press G, Y to move along the Y axis set it right there it doesn't have to be perfect so again with the right plane selected we're going to press shift D I'm going to press R to rotate along the Z axis by 90 degrees we're going to rename this to back and we're going to press control one to go to the back and we're going to align this to this plane we're going to move along the X, G, X. Zoom in, G, X, and then hold down shift for precise movement. So now we have all three planes. We're going to select all three. And then we're going to press M and create a new collection. We're going to name that collection Ref Planes. We're going to make sure the ref planes are unselected. We're going to select the ref cube. We're going to disable it in renders. And we're going to disable it in the viewport. So now, whenever you add any object, you will see that it's only visible in the orthographic mode. When you press five. And since the opacity is selected, you can see through. So when we add a mesh, like the cube, see we'll see the cube and everything else 